Wow. You think uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin gets that kind of entrance? Man. Um, good. Wow, I can't believe there are so many of you here. Well, thank you all for coming. My name is Seth Graham Smith. And uh, as you can tell by the creepy music, I wrote Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. So, uh, yes. That before we just so you know I plan to tell you guys a little bit how I came up with the idea how it was to write the book why I wrote the book what I think about Abe Lincoln um, and uh, and also just you know I'm I'm really eager to hear questions from you guys tonight now uh, what I've been told is in, in order to sort of expedite the question uh, asking process if you guys want to write your questions down I believe everyone has a note card or yes um, and uh, hand them down the aisles. There'll be people waiting to take them for you, and, and I'll get to uh, answering just about everything I can tonight. But first, let's read a little bit from Abe's journal so we get the idea of what we're talking about here. This is when Abe finds out from his father that it was a vampire that killed his mother. The very sight of him awakened some heretofore unknown hatred, hatred of my father, of all things. He revolted me. I ran into the night for fear of do if I were in his presence a moment longer. My anger kept me away for three days and nights. I slept in the barns and outbuildings of neighbors, stole eggs and ears of corn, walked until my legs shook from exhaustion, wept at the thought of my mother. They had taken her from me, father and Jack Bartz. I hated myself for being too small to protect her. I hated my father for telling me such impossible, unspeakable things, and yet I knew they were the truth. I cannot explain how I knew with such certainty, but I did the way my father had hushed us when we spun vampire yarns, the screams that had carried on the wind at night, my mother's fevered whispers about looking the devil in the eyes. Father was a drunk, an indolent, loveless drunk, but he was no liar. During those three days of anger and grief, I gave in to madness and admitted something to myself. I believed in vampires. I believed in them, and I hated them to the last. Well. That doesn't bode well for America's vampires. Um, so, first of all, again, thank you all for spending a, a Saturday night here. Um, and I wanted to, just before I forget to do it, because I'm sorry to, uh, looking out at all of you, I'm, you know, shaking like a leaf up here. Um, thank you to the, uh, the Abraham Lincoln uh, Presidential Library Museum for putting on this fantastic event. Wow. That's creepy. Um, Thank you to everybody who took me around today, who showed me this wonderful museum. I've never been to Springfield before today. And I love Springfield. Everything I've seen today, I got to see the tomb. I got to see uh, the law offices, the state house. I got to see every square inch of the museum. I got to go into the vault below your feet and touch a handwritten copy of the Gettysburg Address. Yeah, now you wish you wrote about vampires. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a spectacular day, and everyone here has been um, amazing. And so thank you, and thank you to all for, uh, for sacrificing your Saturday night, and some of you for driving uh, a, a great distance to be here. Um, I will try to make it worth your while. Uh, tell a couple jokes, do some soft shoe for you, sing a song. Um, I want to talk about how this came to be, because I always get the first question, so, Abraham Lincoln and vampires, what's that all about? Where'd that come from? Um, the answer is from wandering into bookstores. Uh, I like to spend time in bookstores, big, small, mom and pop chains, big cities, small towns. Wherever I am in the country, I like to go to a bookstore because it's research. I like to go in and I like to see what's on the front tables, what people are lifting up and looking at, uh, what people are interested in. And about two years ago, maybe a year and a half, it seemed like every bookstore in America, in anticipation of the Lincoln Bicentennial, had a Lincoln table in the front of the store. And it also seemed like there was a new Lincoln book coming out, well, it seemed like on a weekly basis. You know, there was Lincoln's uh, horse, Lincoln's law practice, Lincoln's uh, uh, axe swinging abilities. You know, every, every aspect of Lincoln that could be uh, dissected and, and, uh, and written about was being dissected and written about. So there was a Lincoln table in the front of every bookstore. And 
It just so happens, this is also the time, if you remember, that the twilight phenomenon was sort of reaching its critical mass, its apex. Um, and so inevitably, I would see a vampire table right next to the Lincoln tables. And this happened time and time again in every bookstore I wandered into. Lincoln, vampire, vampire, Lincoln, Lincoln, vampire. And uh, I thought, hmm, people can't seem to get enough of Lincoln and vampires. I wonder if the, it's like the Reese's peanut butter cup philosophy, you know? I wonder if these two great tastes will taste even better together. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, I, I love to read uh, uh, history for pleasure, you know, uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin, um, Walter Isaacson, uh, David McCullough, um, you know, people who just know how to bring history to life, and, and that's what I do my pleasure reading. Most of my pleasure reading is that and scary novels. Um, and uh, uh, so I had a passing familiarity with Lincoln, um, probably no more than, you know, I did when I was in high school, to be honest with you. Uh, so the first thing I, I did was uh, I tried to give myself a crash course in the Lincoln life story. Yeah, I tried to, uh, you know, I reread Doris's book. Uh, I read a, a book called Lincoln President-Elect by Howard Holzer. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, I hopped on the good old internet and tried to give myself sort of a working knowledge of Lincoln. Now, I knew in a couple of months' worth of research, there's no way I'm going to become a Lincoln expert. There's no way I'm going to become a Lincoln scholar. There's probably no way I'm going to even become a, a Lincoln student, really, in that amount of time. But that wasn't really my goal. That's not the goal of the book. The goal of the book is to entertain, but what I wanted to do was put as much real history in the book as I possibly could. Um, so I gave myself a crash course in Lincoln, and something that I did not expect to happen happened, which is I fell in love with Abraham Lincoln. Uh, not in a literal sense. I know that there's people have written about that. We don't need to visit that subject. <laughs> um, but, uh, but what I mean is, uh, here is a man who suffered the trials of Job. He's a man, and I did not realize this before my research began, who from the time he is born to the day he dies never really gets out from under that black cloud over, uh, over his head. Um, there are moments, moments when he, you know, we all know he had a famous love of telling funny stories and he could be very jovial, but most of the time, those happy moments in his life were unfortunately just prelude to some next great tragedy. Um, and yet, here this man uh, picked himself up time and time again after he buried his mother, after he buried his sister, after, if you believe the rumors or not, he buried Ann Rutledge. I know this is a matter of some debate, so. Um, after he buried two of his sons, um, after he dealt with some of, you know, Mary's bad days. Um, he had not a penny to his name. He had no name, for that matter, to trade on. And uh, he had no education to speak of. And yet, here's a man who, through the sheer will uh, and genius uh, within him, achieved the greatest office, the highest office in the land. And oh, by the way, used that office more brilliantly than probably any holder that office ever has.